Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the third provision of today's weekly contest, Sliding Subaru Beauty. In this video, we'll be looking at one of its follow-up, harder follow-up as well. So if you just want to watch the follow-up in case you have solved the problem, you can directly jump to the follow-up part. I will link all the timestamps in the description down below so that you can directly jump to that part. So with that, let's get started. The problem states that you are given uh, array nums, which consist of n integers, and you have to find the beauty of each subarray of size k. Now, the beauty of a subarray is defined as the xth smallest integer in the subarray if it is negative, otherwise zero if there are fewer than x negative integers. So basically, you will sort the subarray, you will find the xth smallest integer. Now, if xth smallest integer is negative, then that integer would be the beauty of the array. Otherwise, beauty of the array would be zero, right? So you have to return the beauty of all the subarray of size k. So let's take an example. Let's say this is the array. k is 3 and x is 2, which means you have to figure out the beauty of all the subarray of size 3. And the beauty is defined as the second largest element in the subarray if it is negative, otherwise zero. So for example, this is the first subarray of size 3. If you sort the array, it would be minus 3, minus 1, 1. And second largest element would be minus 1. So in this subarray, second largest element is minus 1. And because minus 1 is negative, so the beauty of the sub of this particular subarray is minus 1. Hence, the first element in the output is minus 1. Now, the second subarray is this. Again, second largest element in the subarray is minus 2. And minus 2 is again negative integer. So beauty of the subarray is minus 2. Finally, this is the subarray and here the second largest element is again minus 2 and as minus 2 is negative, the value here is minus 2. Notice that uh, if the second largest element is positive, then you have to return 0, right? So as per the condition. So hope the problem statement is clear. Now how to solve this? So as always, let's say uh, this is a subarray and k is 3. So you have to figure out the subarray, uh, the beauty of each subarray of size 3. Right now, this is the first subarray. So what, like in brute force way, what you will do, you will just sort this particular array and figure out the second largest element. Now, sorting an array would take k log k time because there are k elements, right? And figuring out the excess smallest element would just be an order one operation, right? So the complexity of that approach would be something like k log k into n k log k because you are sorting each of these k sized array and you are doing this for n times basically how many like and there will be n minus k plus one subarray of size k and you will be doing this sorting for each of those subarray so this would be the time complexity but surely this will not pass because n and k both are up to 10 to the power 5 right now we have to optimize this so there are various possible ways to optimize this. So one possible way could be to just try removing, like changing the sorting algorithm. So in this case, we are using, let's say merge sort or any sorting algorithm of time, which takes order k log k time. If we can reduce this to some factor, uh, let's say x, which actually lies within the range of the numbers because the range of the numbers are very small, right? So this X would be somewhere in the order of 50. So if we can reduce this sorting algorithm to order X, then we can simply apply this exact same algorithm and it would pass the given time constraint because N is up to 10 to the power 5 and X would be of the order 50, right? So that's our motive. So what is the sorting algorithm that can take order of uh, elements time. So the only sorting algorithm that can do this is counting sort. So what you will do, let's say for uh, this, for this array, uh, let's say you are taking care of the first k size subarray. So in this case, uh, you will just maintain a array where each index would denote the possible value in the array. So for now, let's assume that only values in the array could be from minus 3 to 3, 
right? So this is the these are the only possible values. So you will just create an array of size seven, which contain everything from minus three to three. Now zero index like maps to minus three. First index maps to minus two, and so on and so forth. Now whenever you get an index, you will simply insert an element here. So you will simply increment the frequency. Now you get minus one, you will simply increment the frequency of minus one. Now you get minus three, you simply increment the frequency of minus three. Now you, when you need to find out the second smallest element, you can simply iterate from left to right and figure out the first element up till which you are able to get x number of elements, right? So in this particular example, let's say x is two. So you will iterate from left to right because you are iterating from left to right. You are sure that you are iterating from smallest to largest because we have indexed the element in that fashion, right? Now, when we are iterating over this, we can simply keep a count. We have to find second largest element. We'll keep a count. Uh, currently, the count is one, right? So basically, it means that up till three, there are up till minus three, there are one element. So you will increment the value, um, increment the index. Again, keep a count. The count will again be one. So it means up till minus two, there are one. There is one element. Now you will again increment this count. So this count would become two. So it means up till minus one, there are two elements. So because you want the second largest element, and this is the first index where you get that okay, this this up till this index there are two elements. So minus one would be the except largest element. So again, just to reiterate, let's say up till minus two, there are x elements, right? Or, or let's say there are some a elements, and let's say a is less than x. So it means that there are some elements which are less than x. Now, up till minus one, let's say there are b number of elements, and let's say b is greater than x. It means there, like there are a minus b elements which actually has value minus one, and they like one of these would be the xset largest element, right? So hence uh, our xset largest element would just be the position up till which the count become greater than equals to x for the first time, right? So just to give you the pseudo code, so pseudo code would look something like this. You will have let's say three function: add, remove, and finding out the xset largest. So whenever you are considering an array. You will first simply add everything to your uh, frequency array or like counting sort array, and whenever you will go to the next array, what you will do? You will remove the previous element and add a new element, right? So basically, we will decrease the frequency of one, so this will be zero, and increase the frequency of two, so this would be one, right? So that's how we will keep on updating this array, and updating this array would just be an order one operation. Like adding and removing would just be an order one operation, and finding out the xth largest would uh, mean that you are iterating over the array from left to right, and this array length is hundred because we know the value can only be up to Minus 50 to plus 50, so there can be at most 100 elements in this array, and the complexity would now become n into 100, right? So this solution would definitely pass because uh, this would fit in the current given time complexity. So let's quickly look at what the add or remove function would look like. Add or remove function would simply be adding a particular element to the frequency array. Remove will simply be removing an element from the frequency array, and finally, the xth largest element. For that, as we have discussed, we will simply iterate over the frequency array from left to right. So we will iterate from minus 50 to minus 1. Now we are not iterating up till 50 because it is given in the problem that if the kth largest element is negative, so sorry, if kth largest if xth largest element is not negative, we have to return 0. So that's why we can simply stop at minus one. 
if up till minus 1 we get a position where the value of count is greater than or equals to x then that is the xth largest element if we don't get such element we will return 0 because we know xth largest element would lie somewhere after 0 right and for all such cases we have to return 0 right so that's the simple pseudo code uh, if you have watched until this i would strongly encourage you to pause the video and try to code this entire thing by yourself this is just a simple counting sort algorithm nothing fancy here uh, so next we will look at the code the code is exactly similar to the pseudo code that we have just seen we will iterate from 0 to k minus 1 to add the first k minus 1 elements and uh, after that we will simply add the new element push the exit largest element in the result and remove the previous element right now add or remove function is exactly similar uh, we will just increment and decrement the frequencies respectively and finally exit largest element we keep on maintaining account we will go from uh, minus 50 until 0 the first time counts become greater than or equals to x that is the exit largest element that we are looking for and if that doesn't happen it means the exit largest element is greater than or equals to 0 and in that case we have to return 0 in the result so so far so good the complexity is order n into uh, let's say k where not k let's let's uh, take is l where l is the number of distinct value or let's say d so d is the number of distinct values in the given array this is the complexity but uh, can you reduce this can you bring uh, this order n into d into n log n time because if let's say d is up to 20 to the power 9 or something of that order you will not be able to apply this algorithm at all so the next follow up problem that we will be solving is solving this exact same problem in order n log n or n log d or something of that sort right so again i would strongly encourage you to pause the video and try to think this solution yourself a small hint could be you will just iterate over this array in a different fashion that's it nothing fancy there so hope you thought about it so this so basically d was coming because for each of the sub array we are iterating from left to right to figure out the first element where the value becomes greater than or equals to x right so basically let's say x is 7 or 6 right so we have to find out the first element up till which count becomes 6 so we are maintaining a counter so initially count is 3 right and we will increment and it will become 5 after we reach minus 2 and then it will become 7 after we reach minus 1 and so on and so forth so we are maintaining a counter now 3 5 7 what this exactly is this is simply the prefix sum right so let's say we calculated the prefix sum as well for the given array 3 5 7 11 12 13 and 17 now finding out the exit largest element is simply figuring out where does 6 belongs to so what is the element which is greater than equals to 6 so in this case this is the first element which is greater than equals to 6 so what we can do if we have this prefix sum array with us we can simply do a lower bound here and we will get the answer but the thing is we are updating our frequency array as well so we are keep we are adding and removing elements from this frequency array as well and because we are adding and removing elements so let's say we decrease its frequency to 0 for example so in that case the value here would be 5 right and everything after that will also change so this will now become 9 right this will become 10 and so on and so forth so basically whenever we update something we have to update all the elements that follows it so basically we are updating d number of elements so we have reduced the time for finding out the exit largest element but we have increased the time of adding or removing an element from order 1 to order d previously adding and removing was simply a increase or decrease operation but now because we have to keep maintained the prefix array as well we have to iterate over all of the values to update their value uh, to, uh, to update them based on the updated value 
So this would become already. Now, how to solve this? Again, uh, this is a standard problem. So pause the video and try to think for a moment. The, st the standard solution here is segmentary. Basically, any kind of range query data structure that can give you point updates functionality as well. So in this case, what we are doing, we are doing a point update and we, while doing a binary search or lower bound, what we need, we need the sum of a particular range. Let's say you are doing a binary search and uh, what binary search typically is, we just uh, go to the middle element, right? And say how many, like whether to go left or right. Now, how to decide whether to go left or right? We have to figure out what is the sum until this point, right? So basically we are doing a range sum here. So we can simply re represent this array in a segment tree and do a binary search with the help of the segment tree. So for, for, for this case, what we will do, we will first come to 11. We will do a query in the range 0 to 4, right? Or 0 to 3. We will do a range sum query in this range. We will get 11, right? Now we will say, okay, 11 is greater than 6. So we can, we should go left. We basically, we can skip the complete right part because we know that six will come somewhere in the left because the current value is 11. So then we will simply update the pointer to the next middle element. Now again, we will do a range sum in this range. So we'll do again range query in the range zero to one. So range query will give us five. So again, we will say, okay, uh, five is actually less than equals to six. So we can completely skip the left half and we can only search in the right half. So we will, now we are searching in this range, five to 11, right? So now again, you will do a range sum in this particular range, right? Zero to two. And this value would, this would give us seven. And finally, uh, because we are at the middle of like, we know that the previous one was five and current one is seven and six lies between them. So this is our final index that we are looking for, right? So what is the time complexity here? Again, binary search take order log n time, no doubts there, but with each iteration. So whenever we reach at a particular point and we are asking whether to go left or right, we have to do a query over the segment tree and query over the segment tree would take log n time as well. So in total, the complexity of finding out a particular index is log square n, right? This is like finding out the except largest element, right? For addition, it would be simply be adding or updating an index in the segment tree that would take order log n time. Similarly, for removal, we are updating one particular index or segment tree that will also be log n only. So addition is log n, removal is log n, finding out x at largest element is log square n. So entire algorithm would now work in order n log square n, right? So I would encourage you to code this entire thing by yourself. If you are not aware what segmentary is, I already uploaded a detailed video on segmentary. We have started a series on segmentary where we are trying to dissect segmentary starting from scratch and solving harder problems day by day. So I already uploaded five or six videos in that series. I would link the playlist in the description down below. Make sure to check it out. And finally, we can also reduce the complexity from n square n log square n to n log n using segmentary itself. And how to do this? We will look at in the next segmentary series uh, video. Basically, in up till now, we were just focused on one particular kind of problem, queries in the prefix of the array. But uh, from now onwards, we will be looking at the binary search in segmentary. And in there, we will discuss how to solve this exact same problem in order and login time as well. So with that, uh, we will discuss this in the next particular video. I would strongly encourage you to code this n log n square solution by yourself. Uh, that will give you much better understanding of both segmentary as well as binary search in general. If you need any help in coding solution yourself, uh, feel free to post them in the comments below. I would happy to answer. And uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.